Welcome to the Lionheart Academy. This is Richard Tai. Today we are continuing our lessons in trigonometry. Today is lesson number eight. We are going to start a very important part of our lesson, which is very fundamental to understanding trigonometry. Uh, we are going to call it the functions of acute angles. Now, why is it called the function of acute angles? Well, because today we are going to look at some functions, six of them actually, and then we are going to look at them in terms of acute angles. And another way to look at it, uh, to call this lesson would be right triangle triangle trigonometry. Okay, <coughs> right triangle trigonometry. So we're going to approach the concept of trigonometry start first starting using a right triangle. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with the, our right triangles. Now let's do a few review. Uh, what is a right triangle? If you think about <coughs> a triangle, w uh, what is a right triangle? Well, some of you may have answered it correctly. A right triangle is a triangle that simply has um, a right angle inside the right triangle. So let's call this right triangle ABC. And before we start, let us go ahead and make sure we understand each other um, in terms of the nomenclature and in terms of our <coughs> naming uh, system. Because understanding the naming system is very important. If we understand uh, uh, how we call things correctly, and then you can uh, it will definitely enhance you enhance your ability to understand the concepts. So we have three angles. We label each ver uh, we have a triangle. We have three angles and three vertices, and we can label them in capital A, capital B, capital C. And letter C usually is reserved for the right triangle uh, for the right angle. And we're going to have three sides. Side A is opposite of angle A. Side B is opposite of angle B. Side C is opposite of angle C. Okay. Now, how do you say, what, what do I mean by opposite? Well, imagine yourself standing here at corner C. And you look away. When you look away to the other side, okay, not next to you, not to your left, not to your right. But if you look away, you see side C. That's called opposite. Okay. This is a very important definition. Just remember that if you're standing at corner A, you look away to the other side, you see side A. All right, and the sides are going to be used lowercase letters. Angles, we're going to use uppercase letters. Now, I know angle C is sometimes going to be hard to distinguish from side C, so sometimes we do this we put an angle, uh, an angle symbol. Like a like an angle and with a slash here across it, uh, with a curve with an arc, a little arc across it. That's called angle. So we will put angle C, angle sign next to angle C to indicate that it is an angle. <coughs> okay. So what do we know about a right triangle? Well, uh, there are several things we do know. First, we know the three sides are related. They are two legs. Okay. In a triangle, we have two legs. The adjacent the sides. <clears throat> that form the right angle, angle C, side A and side B are called lakes. Okay, side A and side B are called lakes. So, uh, and the side opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So this side is called the hypotenuse. Okay, hypotenuse. And this is a lake, and this is another lake. So we have two lakes, and we have on one hypotenuse. And do we know any? Um, do we know anything that can help us relate them? Well, you probably remember something called the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem, to say to say the very least, uh, simply is. The sum of the leg square is equal to the hypotenuse squares of in a, any right triangle. So, in mathematical terms, it would be a square plus b square equal to c square. They're lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c. So, the sum of the squares of the legs, okay, a square plus b square, is equal to the hypotenuse square, which is c square. All right. So, with this equation. If I know any two sides, I can find out the third side of a tri right triangle. That is very helpful because that will help us be able to solve a lot of problems and solve a lot of triangles. Okay. Now, what about another? Is do we know anything else about the triangle ABC here? Well, I know angle C is a 90 degree angle. Is that true? So angle C is 90 degrees, and we could have met, we put the M in front of it to indicate this the measure of angle C is 90 degrees. So that means. <coughs> angle A, measure of angle A, and measure of angle B, they also equal to 90 degrees because in a right triangle, in any triangle, 
the sum of the interior angles. The interior angles always equal to 180 degrees in a plane geometry. Plane geometry. Okay, 180. So angle C plus angle B plus angle A. The three angles add up to 180. Well, but that's not always true in real life. Okay, because uh, we have different dimensions. But for our, all our geometry, Euclidean geometry purposes, that's true. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C should always be equal to 180 degrees. So if C is already equal to 90, that means measurement of angle A plus measurement of angle B will always be equal to 90 degrees as well. So that means those two angles are complementary. So yes, you can see we have lots of vocabularies going on here. Concepts are labeling vocabulary. So this is uh, all very important because if you get them straight, it will be much, much easier for you in the, in the coming lessons. All right. Now, so, so far, this is the two relationship we know. We know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we know measurement angle a plus measurement angle b equals 90 degrees. That's good. But uh, they don't tell us anything between the relationship between the angles and the size. Or if I know angles and if I know one side and two sides and one angle or <coughs> two angles and one side, they won't help us solve the other information. Okay. So. This is uh, where we have learned before. So, so far we have talked about everything you have, should have learned in geometry. Now, but, or maybe you already have learned something uh, about in geometry as well. But, so today we're going to talk about then the rise of the trigonometry ratios. Okay, the trigonometric functions. Trigonometry ratios. So what are the trigonometry ratios? Basically, this is a ratio of sides relating to the angle. Okay, It is actually a function. There are functions. So let me go ahead and explain uh, in a function term as well. But let's go to the trigonometry ratios of the sides of a right triangle. So here we're going to start with using a right triangle to talk about that. <coughs> Alright, so let me move up. And let me draw another right triangle here so we can all reference to it. Actually, let me do that. There, I'm drawing the right triangle. So angle A here, angle B here, it doesn't really matter which one's angle A, which one's angle B. But angle C, I'm going to go ahead and set it to <coughs> the right angle. All right, side A here, and then side B, opposite of angle B. Side C is the hypotenuse, which is opposite of side A, angle C. Alright, so now we're all set. Now, <coughs> you see there are six ratios between this, uh, the th three sides, right? You can have uh, ratios can have A over B, that's a ratio, side A over side B, side A over side C, okay, side B over side A, side B over side C, side C over side A, and side C over side B. So all together we have six ratios. All right. <clears throat> and the mathematicians throughout ancient times, throughout history, they discovered that the ratios of the size is related to the angles. Because to make a triangle, every uh, part is related. Uh, you change this angle, you have to change the measurement of this side and this side. And uh, you might have to change the measurement of that angle too. So they are, they are all interconnected. They're all interconnected. So therefore, the six ratios, they find out are related to the measurement of the angles. So they created something called a function, a trigonometry function. Now, I'm not sure how you're familiar with the, how wor a function works. Okay, so this is a trig function. Okay, a function is like a vending machine. Okay, you put something in, you get something out. All right, again, it's like a vending machine. You have a certain input, and the trig function gives you a certain output. Okay, so <coughs> what do we put in a trig function? Well, guess what? We put in a measure of an angle. We put in a measure of an angle, and what do we get out? We get out a ratio of the sides of a triangle. In this case, okay. Later on, we're going to expand. We're going to expand this definition as well. But what do we put in? We put in a measure of an angle. 
and then what do we get out? We get out a uh, ratio of the size of a triangle. Now in terms of the right triangle, we're putting the measure of an acute angle. We only do the ratio for the acute angles. We won't be able to do <coughs> the ratio for it. Well, actually, we can, but uh, no, we won't be able to do the, uh, the trig functions in terms of the 90 degree angle. That's why we call this this does an acute angle, right? And then what do we get out? We get out a ratio of the size of a right triangle. Okay, all right. So let's take a look at those ratios and those functions. There are six of them. Uh, all right, this one is called the first one is called sine s i n e sine. Now in uh, ab abbreviation, <coughs> we're gonna use s i n. And then we have cosine. Cosine is the co-function of sine. That's why it's called cosine. Now, co, like the word co-worker, company, uh, co-op, co means together. Okay. So cosine is the co-function of sine. All right. And then we have six. Actually, we have three sets of co-functions. Right. Then we have uh, secant. S e c a c n t secant, and we have cosecant. Okay, we have cosecant. Then we have tangent, and we have cotangent. Now, every one of them is related to a certain geometrical shape and geometrical definition. Uh, later on, I uh, will be able to go into with what uh, what they are. Okay, so we have sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. So there are uh, three pairs of cofunctions that are very easy to remember. Okay, all right, so what are they? Well, so sine, if of an angle, if we go ahead and design the sine of angle, sine of any angle, A, okay, will be its opposite leg, oh, opposite leg, divide by the hypotenuse. So sometimes uh, you probably remember this as opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. So cosine of an angle, let's say A, in this case, is going to be adjacent leg. Now remember, it's not adjacent side. I know a lot of you say adjacent side, but you have to remember it as adjacent leg. Now, why do I say that? Because if you look at the triangle, sometimes it's hard to tell which side is adjacent leg, which side is uh, hypotenuse. Because, in, like for example, angle B, right? Angle B has actually two adjacent sides. One is side A, one is side C. However, there's only one adjacent leg. Adjacent leg is A. Why? Because A is a leg because it is part of the tri right triangle C. Right angle C, I'm sorry. Leg A and leg B, side A and side B, they are legs because they form the right angle C. And side C, hypotenuse, is the opposite side of angle C. So that's the better way to remember it. I know a lot of you from before, you learned that, oh, it's the opposite over hypotenuse. Well, it's true, but it's opposite what? Opposite leg, okay? So that's very, very important to remember that, okay? Now, so we have three co cofunctions here. The most important one that we use is usually sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to go ahead and define tangent first. The tangent is the <coughs> opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse leg. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the adjacent leg. Oh, you see, I made a mistake there. It's opposite leg over adjacent leg. Okay, so in the beginning, I would like you to really make a conscious uh, effort to make sure you remember it's a leg. It's not just any side. It's opposite leg, not opposite side. All right. Now, secant, we use SEC. Okay, secant X. All right, let's do secant A. Secant is going to be adjacent. Adjacent leg. Oh no, I actually <coughs> made a mistake. Secant is the hypotenuse. Uh, now you can see a pattern here later, divide by the adjacent leg. Okay. And cosecant is CSC. Cosecant is going to be the hypotenuse. Divide by the opposite leg. Okay. Oh, it didn't come out. And then lastly is cotangent. Now cotangent you can write COT or you can write CTN. It's on the adjacent leg. 
divide by the uh, opposite link. All right, so this is the basic definition here. Now let me write their shortcut. So, so cotangent cot is their function name, or ctn, or you can write ctn. See now, some other older textbook you would do that. Sin is sin. It's not sin. Okay, we're not talking about sin here. Cosine <coughs> and secant and cosecant. Okay. CSC. All right. So the major definitions are all here. I think this is uh, definitely something uh, a lot of you have already heard. A lot of you have already heard about this definition, and I think this is a very simple definition. <coughs> and there is a very nice way to remember this is called so ka. I'm sure some of you already heard about it and even <laughs> heard about his story. Sokotoa is an Indian chief story. But anyway, we're not going to go over and talk about that yet. <coughs> Just here yet. All right, so what does that mean in our what does that mean in our actual right triangle? Okay? So let's go take a look at the right triangle and see if we can define that and then All right. So let me go ahead and draw a right triangle here. All right. So now remember, we're going to label angle A anywhere I want to, angle B, as long as they're the acute angles, and the angle C is going to be the right angle. And this is going to be side A, it's going to be side B, it's going to be side C. All right, so based on our definition, all right, let me pull out just a little bit. Oh, that put out too much. All right, <coughs> so sine of angle A is going to be the opposite leg, which is A, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. Uh, cosine of angle A is going to be the adjacent side, which is B, divided by C. <coughs> the hypotenuse. Tangent A is the opposite side, which is opposite leg, which is A, divided by adjacent leg is B. You see, even I sometimes made the mistake of not saying adjacent leg. And so we need, probably need to make a conscious decision to change that. And secant A is going to be the adjacent leg, divided by, oh, I'm sorry, hypotenuse, divided by adjacent leg. All right, and cosecant A is going to be the hypotenuse divided by the opposite leg, and cotangent of the angle A is going to be the uh, <coughs> excuse me adjacent leg divided by the opposite leg. Okay, so that's for angle A. What about for angle B? Well, sine angle B is this opposite leg. Well, but for B, it's opposite B, so it's B over C. Okay, so cosine B is adjacent, which is A over C, and tangent of angle B is the opposite, which is B over A. Okay, opposite leg divided by adjacent leg. All right, and then secant of angle B, secant of angle B is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent leg, and then cosecant of angle B is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite leg. Okay, and cotangent, the last one of angle B, is the adjacent leg divided by the opposite leg. So of course, if you go ahead and look at this, <coughs> they are very, very rela they are related because a and angle A and B are complementary, so definitely their uh, ratios, their strict ratios are related in, in a very special way. We probably don't have time to talk about it today, but we'll continue to talk about this next week, uh, next time we come back. So let us uh, go ahead and end here. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this lesson today. If you have any questions and comments, please leave in the comment section. All right. And uh, we hope you in, uh, come back and enjoy uh, join us for the continuation of our trigonometry lesson. Thank you.